so good morning everybody i am raja mohammad working as an associate professor in the department of computer science kat kalangar karnataka institute of technology so as part of the teaching learning process so i wish to talk few words about finite automata uh, this topic comes under the subject called theory of computation so theory of computation as you know that is a very important subject which talks in terms of uh, computation how uh, digital computers are going to compute or solve a problem using various methodologies or algorithms in uh, say in general you see so here today we are going to discuss about a topic called finite automata so automata say it's a kind of a representation of a machine that comprehensively shows different possible states along with the transitions you uh, know a machine can uh, can have while responding to a series of input or or to say a predetermined states with the predetermined input or expected output see here what is going to be recognized here in a finite automata always as as usual uh, regular languages which is going to be what to say recognized here so the finite automata is again divided into two types deterministic finite automata and non deterministic finite automata shortly called as uh, uh, dfa and nfa so in dfa for any given input there will be only one state transition at any given time that means if you read if the machine reads a symbol which will change from current state to the next state only one what to say for one single input acceptance and whereas in the case of nfa for a single input there may be more than one transition that means there will be more than one number of state changes okay got it clear then we again uh, uh, we wish you know so we have to see how a dfa is you know recognized you know say or shown or represented here a dfa is a five tuple record which is shown here and then the, uh, there are uh, different terminologies uh, say different terms uh, mathematical expressions you uh, know uh, say representing a dfa starting with number of uh, capital q sort of finite states sigma the number of input alpha or say the finite set of input alphabets q q not which is nothing but a starting state capital f maybe one state one final state or maybe set of final states and del is a transition or a mapping function for which will it can tell us for what input that means from the input symbol it it is going to change from which state to which state so it is represented in a form of a five tuple record and now, now how this dfa can be used dfa always reads or gets a symbol from sigma that means a sigma here it is mentioned as a sigma star it's mentioned as sigma star that means what multiple uh, what to say simple combinations can be used here right that means say for example if sigma has you know the symbols a and b we can write it as a or a a or a b or b a likewise various different combinations star represents clean closer that means sometimes it may also be empty that means epsilon so now we need to check whether a dfa is accepting an input string generated from the inputs then what is a set of input symbols so always as you know that it starts from the uh, state called q not for every input symbol in the sequence that means word w you know it will compute the next possible state from the current state so which is called as transition so this transition is defined using the function called del so and by reading each input symbol of a word from the state q not and if it reaches the final state we call that that 
what to say the dfa has accepted the string otherwise you know we call that it has rejected the string now another terminology that is regular languages so regular language in the sense what you know regular language is a representation of what to say various symbols uh, which is mostly you know, what to say going to be used by dfa for what purpose to recognize to recognize a language we use dfa so regular languages are recognized by dfa right so regular language is also represented uh, uh, by chomsky that means noam chomsky's hierarchy which we had studied earlier here you could see a so uh, now what is an ex an example that uh, building a dfa for a, a specific language here the language l has a word w the w is also having some conditions that the w is a binary string that means which has only possible strings as zeros and ones that means it contains zero one as a substring that means any string that contains the sequence zero one has to be accepted so here as usual we define uh, the input symbols number of states starting and finding st final uh, what is a final states uh, transition states all these things are defined here here you could see uh, in the diagram so starts with q not and say initially it accepts 1 or 0 that means if it accepts 1 stays at the state q not 0 means it goes to q1 again you have a 0 or 1 combination that means here you have the sub substring called 0 1 so this dfa will accept all the strings containing uh, the combination called 0 1 and this is also represented using a regular expression called 0 plus 1 whole star 0 1 uh, or 0 plus 1 or whole star so which is also and what is a represented in the form of a table stating the initial state with an arrow and the final state with a star symbol now in the so what to say uh, ex a second example you know we we can uh, say uh, assume we have a clamping circuit which is waiting for a symbol to be read that means one that means if you feed one the sim you know, what to say circuit goes to on state and if it is zero it goes to off so a dfa will have to have two consecutive ones in a row before clamping that means clamping in the sense is first of all switch on the circuit and then stay at the same state for some time until you read the next symbol so the substring has to be here 1 1 and now you know coming into the third example uh, do, you know what is a, a string having even number of zeros and uh, even number of ones so the possible input symbols are zeros and ones which is represented using a transition function called del so which is nothing but an extension of transition del rep starts from the word q not starts from the state q not by reading the input symbol w and has to terminate itself by reaching the final state qf so which is a successive transition means for each input symbol there must be a transition from one state to the other state so which is uh, shown in the exercise listed here so what are all the languages that are accepted by dfa dfa generally accepts any you know what to say uh, uh, if there is exactly a path from the starting state to the final state for a given word that means w <coughs> similarly we discuss about non deterministic finite automata non deterministic finite automata is one as i said earlier reads an input symbol and for a single input and uh, i uh, say single symbol input there will be more than one transition see here in the example you could see clearly that qi is the current state reads the symbol 1 and it may go to either state qj or qk so here each transition is mapped to a set of what to say more than one states so how this is getting represented the same phi tuple record is used uh, for nfa2 means set of states input symbols initial state final state and mapping function 
so how this is going to be used here so again as i said earlier uh, how dfa was functioning in the same way nfa is going to come now what is a function but here we are going to have we will be exploring more than one input transition at any given time so here the nfa is also going to start from the final in the initial state end up with the final state if it does so it accepts the string otherwise it rejects the string so nfa uh, for as what is a uh, the uh, no, uh, string that consists a substring called zero one here you could clearly see that uh, the q naught is the state that starts with either zero or one if it is zero or one it stays at q naught or it goes to q one so for the symbol zero there are two possible transition mapping processes so which is clearly shown here in the table so just like how we did build a language for uh, means a word language for uh, dfa in the same way nfa can uh, also be done so what are all the uh, say pros and cons of an nfa that it is a it is very useful to model regular expressions especially to what is a to simulate or to uh, or what is a figure out string processing such as uh, grep commands lexical analyzers uh, say imaginary uh, uh, what is a uh, text or audio or video processing uh, or even data mining where and all uh, this can be used so again nfa this is say can be used to implement a probabilistic uh, probabilistic uh, uh, cases of a toss of a coin or a roll of a dice likewise for a single input having multiple uh, outputs so finally you could see the differences between dfa and nfa read out all the things that dfa has only one transition whereas nfa has more transitions for a single input for each time in you know, each state change there is only one possible symbol whereas here it need not be a single symbol it accepts input by reaching the final state here nfa also does the same so it is very difficult to construct a uh, dfa sometimes because uh, of the number of states are very much or what is a specific here it is very easy as we can change the number of states uh, implementation of dfa that means practical implementation is very very feasible that means uh, you have a given input for which only you will be designing whereas uh, implementation of uh, nfa is slightly complex because uh, you know every uh, dfa uh, will be part of an NFA. That means from an NFA, a DFA can be derived. Uh, whereas designing or defining or implementing a DNFA is always a tough task. So thank you for your patient listening. Thank you.